Hi everyone and welcome back to another Campbellton review. Yeah, on the Age of Craftsmanship part 2, of course. But, yeah, we're doing Springbank and Kilcare in this day. Or in this review at least. And what will we be reviewing? Well, we will be reviewing something very special. We'll be reviewing these two. Let's see if we can get a good look at them. There we go. Look really good actually. So, this is two 15 year old whiskies from Springbank and Glengyle. And they are 15 years old. Quite high, high ABV. And they have another thing in common as well. And they are both rum barrel aged. Yeah, for 15 years. Cool, right? And I will tell you soon more about it. So stay tuned. Hi everyone and welcome back, yeah, welcome back to this very special review, I would like to say. But I'll be reviewing these two rum-aged whiskies from Campbellton and Springbank in Glengyle. Yeah, and uh, first I just wanna say why I said it on the logo. The year of the rum-aged whiskies. So I'm just gonna put this away a little bit, very fast. So I don't mix up the glasses though. Um, why I did say that is because uh, last year, it will be 2019, we, lived, we are now in 2020. And as of this moment, and this week is released, it's already March. Isn't that cool? <laughs> this year is going fast already, too fast. So um, the year about the Ron Barrel Age, because um, at the, what's it called now? Spring Bank, open day, basically. They had a long row that was released. That uh, was, I think it was uh, Rum Barrel as well, aged. It was very limited. I didn't get a hands on any, of, any one of those. Long rows, unfortunately. Unfortunately. And uh, then also Glen Scotia, that's also a Campbellton distillery, did a um, 15 or 16 year old peated the Rum Finish whiskey. I think it was Rum Finished and peated it. I know it was. And then uh, Kilcaron released uh, this one. And uh, this one is actually in. Let's see if we get a, there we go, there we go. It is actually uh, to come on commemorate or yeah, it's an anniversary, 15th anniversary for their opening basically. So it's a single cask, it's only 324 bottles, 53.2% ABV. So yeah, it is, uh, yeah, it's quite a collectible thing you could say. So yeah, but I chose to open mine because I really don't care about that whole thing. Because I did try this at the um, Kedem Head shop in uh, um, what's it called now? Campbellton. <laughs> that I'm talking about. I tried it. I only had room for one more bottle. One more bottle, you know. Because you can't have them all. And I tried this one. I was like, um, I'm gonna take this one definitely. So yeah, that was the story how I got that one. Because I did try it, and I was like, Jesus Christ, that was really good. Because um, usually when it comes to rum finishes or rum. Once I have not been that very fond of them. I have some certain, um, what you could call them cask types or maturation ones that I have problems with. That's just because I have not had maybe the, yeah, my experience has been my experience basically. That's how you can say it. They will probably one day change, one day change. Yeah. Sorry if you hear any noises, that is my neighbors. I can't do much more about that. So that's how it is living in an apartment house. Anyway. Uh, I did try the Glen Scotia Peated one. Uh, I did not find that to my liking because I was actually thinking of buying that one. So I tried that the uh, Steamer in Glen Scotia, Glen Scotia, and I no, I wasn't that impressed by it actually. I heard a lot of good things about it, but I tried and I no, it wasn't for me, you know, basically. And uh, still, I tried this Glen Sco this Kilcarran at the distiller instead, or in the Kedemhead shop. And I was really surprised by it, how good that was. So, how are we going to do this one? Um, we are going to start out with uh, Kilkaren, of course. Because it's more, I would say, it's unpeated, as far as I know. Um, Springbank is like 15 ppm, I think it's like something like that. If I'm not too wrong. And also, yeah, just because. So, I'm just going to show you the bottle again. So it will not be like I will tell you which one to buy or anything like that. I will just give you an... And basic, basic review on these two because this one, definitely this one, you know, is where a limited amount should definitely be reviewed. 
Because it's very interesting, you know. But if you have one of these, you do shoes yourself if you want to open it or not. I have seen it now on auctions. It's quite ridiculous. Some people trying to sell this for. <laughs> so, let's get into the news. I actually did some um, before and after. Not before and after, but you know. I did try it once one later this day, before I started recording this. And I also wrote down some notes, just because there was some stuff there I had problems with. Not problems with, but I had a difficulty finding out. And as I said before, rum barrel finishes and all this, or maturations are and that's not something I'm accustomed to or used to. So you probably see that I have actually found some, yeah, new taste things as well, or smell as well. So it's gonna first start out drinking water. <sighs> Sorry. So let's get into the nose on this Kilkeren. So, I can actually find exactly what I wrote down. I found honey, also a new thing. They haven't really smelled before, I know a lot of people can talk about that, you can find it. Yeast, you know, when you're making bread, basically. So I found yeast here as well, the first time actually I found yeast. And it's actually, a yeah, spoiler, but in both of them actually. So yeast, um, the oak, you know, so oak it really smells like... Um, fresh cut wood actually because that's something that I'm now starting to smell as well you know you always learn new things so that's something new for me as well in the last few reviews I've done so fresh cut wood with oak um, it also has some I would say creamy buttery cookie dough with some hint of vanilla as well and also hey I think that's what you call it in English hey Basically, in Sweden we say her. Yeah, her. It's been, you know, dried grass that you do in these big uh, round cylinder forms to give the um, cattle, you know, cows uh, and uh, horses and other sheep and all that so they can eat. So I do get that as well here on the nose. Yeah. Mm. So let's get into the palette now because it's going to be some long video I guess but I will cut away when I'm doing the um, spring break one because I have to do some stuff between mm-hmm Yeah, if I didn't say that before on the nose, it's very tropical. And this is also something you really find on the palate. Really creamy, syrupy, tropical fruit notes. It's really sweet. Malty, uh, vanilla, buttery pastry. There's also the oak here as well. Of course, there should be oak because it's an oak barrel, so. <laughs> no. Um, you do get that. I cannot really. Um, in a way, place what kind of oaking thing I'm think, thinking of actually. There's definitely you can feel the oak, a little bit peppery maybe, or spicy, but not too much actually. But a tiny, tiny bit. Um, and also, the finish we're going to do as well. Just to point out, I actually did put water in this one. The reason to that is because um, when I was going to drink and smell it, you know, smell and drink it, my tasting, um, I realized just how very rough it was. It's very rough, um, very yeasty in the smell. So I have to put some drops of water in it, actually. It actually took down the yeast quite a lot because I thought that was quite overpowering, the whole yeast uh, smell. And um, yeah, the yeast was really overpowering. <coughs> so, yeah. But the finish, hmm. I actually wrote down this because I actually do agree with what I <laughs> with my notes. 
Yeah, that's always good. <laughs> Agreeing with your own notes. Or if the finish is where um, this is where dry, oaky, long, syrupy, sweet uh, thing uh, finish. When I think about the sweet um, finish and all that, I really do think of peach, canned peach in the syrup, and pineapple as well. So yeah, it's a really nice rum. <sighs> Unfortunately, it is you know 324 bottles produced. It is more a collector's item, you know, because Kilkerran is gonna get really big. <laughs> there are already more and more people talking about, especially since the new 8 year old on Rosa Mature, the Kestrin, they did, that everyone is talking about, you know, in YouTube. Which I could probably understand, because just by looking at the color, even though color shouldn't be everything, it looks really damn delicious. So, who knows, maybe it one day we'll come here in Sweden. But this, this is good, it's really good, it's getting better and better. I had it out in the glass for open up, breathe the air, you know, in my room. Not just farts and uh, food smells. But yeah, it's really nice, really nice, really nice whiskey. I recommend you if you can try this one. I know they did some uh, other one, expressions on this. A 15 year old Rosso bourbon uh, single casks and that, they released a certain part of the world. So yeah. Definitely try one of the Really interesting stuff. Really interesting stuff, you know. It's also really nice. It's actually the first ever rum H whiskey I tried. Because I did say I did try the Nova Scotia one. I tried Balwini 14 year old Caribbean cask as well. And I wasn't. Uh, it wasn't appealing to me. My taste, but not that. I had a lot of people that I know drinking whiskey. <sighs> they talked really good about it. And I tried it. And it wasn't really. Yeah, it wasn't my cup of tea. Basically, so I'm just gonna pause, cut, and we're gonna cut away, and then I'm gonna do the spring break. So just stay tuned. Yeah. So now let's get to this, right? So this is the rum wood from spring break, 15 year old, 51 percent, and it was uh, limited to 9,000 bottles. So quite more accessible than the Kilkerran. So you might actually be able to get your hands on one of these. And actually going to be more easier for you to actually try this one in a more bigger, what you should call it, bar with or whiskey pub, you know, all that kind of stuff with better selections, bigger selections, basically. Um, there was quite a lot of people really rushing to get this. Uh, we got it this year, 2020, in Sweden. Yeah, I know it was released 2019, but that's how it is when you live in another part. In another country, you know, you get your turn to get the bottles, and we have to see what happens when, when Brexit happens. We're not going to talk politics, but yeah, let's hope we can still get some spring bags or good whiskey at least. <laughs> After that, anyway, um, yeah, this is um, the Romwood, the 15 year old. I don't know more to say about this. It has apparently only been matured in rum barrels, and um, yeah. You can't drink it if uh, you're pregnant, so yes, you know. Or I don't know, someone told me once, you can't drink this when you're fat. So, yeah, I can't drink this. <laughs> Sorry, Frederick. No, anyway, um, this is also one of those I've been really high expectation to try. I heard so many people talk really good about this whiskey, so I was really eager to try it. Unfortunately, I never got the chance to try it before I buy it, you know, because usually I would say, Try it before you buy it. But this one, no, I bought it without trying. I like Springbank. I've only been, I think, disappointed in Springbank at least once. And it was a 13 year old single cask that I did buy <sighs> too many of. <laughs> so, yeah. Because I thought it was going to be great. And it wasn't that great at all, actually. Unfortunately, but that's how life is. That's so always try before you buy. Anyway, uh, we're going into the news now. The news on this um, spring bank. And I did do some notes as well, because I felt, um, because of the smell and all that. So let's get into it. Yeah. Just like with the Calcaran, you know, it's very interesting. You get the sweet syrupy, tropical notes. You get yeast. You get hay again, or, you know, dry grass. Some spice, um, ginger, vanilla, cookie dough, pastry cookies, or whatever you call them. And also, with this one, 
uh, you know the whole fresh cut wood or more like a damp warehouse or warehouse you're in maybe not too much of it but you know, you can really feel there's something there and it has to do with the oak inf influences I guess so still an old warehouse or you know a fresh cut wood they're lingering in the background on the nose yeah so that's very interesting very good really great nose actually really pleasant so let's get into the palette now cheers Mm, uh. oh, yeah, so fucking good. <laughs> seriously. Ooh, that is good. Seriously. This is. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. 2020 is starting really good on my side. I would say that when it comes to whiskey. So, again, sweet, syrupy, tropical notes. Uh, the whole vanilla cookie, I would say. I do find yeast here as well in the palette. Um, there's also some salty, seaweedy thing I find. Very little hint of peat. Very little hint of peat since there were extremely is the hint of peat anyway in the spring mix. There is some peat, you can actually feel it. The finish, well, I'm going to right now. <laughs> Once again, this is the dry, oaky, sweet, syrupy, tropical fruits again. There's also something really salty in the background as well. Salty, I think some people call it like mineral minerals or something. Not what you do extract in StarCraft <laughs> games. But, you know, something salty there as well in the finish. With all this sweet syrupy, there's also some salt as well. Really nice stuff, seriously. It is really nice, actually. This spring bank is really good. The kill can is also really good. But I will say this though, <coughs> even though I said in the beginning I wouldn't do a comparison, but this whiskey, a spring bank 15 year old, has also made my list so far on the best whiskies that I have tried in 2020. Seriously. Bloody good. So I will put the bows of these right now here. Um, because I'm gonna conclude this review. Seriously, try this. Try these whiskey. Seriously, they are awesome. Both of them, in their own way. This one is, you know, more accessible, so you have more chance, a better chance to try this one. And this one, unfortunately, just 324 bottles released. I don't know how many of those that were bought were actually opened i don't know this one is at least so at least one of them is it's really nice as well it needs time though to open up but once it does it does deliver some really good stuff but this this spring bank i am spring bank fanboy so yeah it is what it is but seriously try before i buy and these two are awesome so i will see you next time on the last spring bank and let's go put these down so I don't f drop them in the air or something. So what's gonna happen in the last one? Well, all I can say is the chapter, or not the chapter, because the chapter is Acher's Craftsmanship Part 2 and I'm doing this, this whole Springbank or Campbellton month. But we will be going to Springbank again, I can tell you that already. And, just a hint, I will call it And All the Friendly Locals. Yeah, exactly. So, stay tuned and see you next time. Bye!